with. That's their security mechanism. It's good. It was well designed. And you know, they kind of imply uh, corruption, tampering, that's bad. Uh, so enabling it must be good. But again, they're not coming out and saying, if you don't enable it, you're going to be vulnerable to certain types of attacks. After many hours of digging, I found one reference at Microsoft to the type of attack that's possible with, with .NET. And, and the, the .NET vulnerability is much smaller in scope, as you'll see in a little bit, than the, uh, the Java attacks. But uh, there's a document that actually has to do with troubleshooting, and it wasn't about security at all. But the author apparently knew, understood what was going on with ViewState. He says that, for example, an attacker could decode the data in the ViewState, inject script into the data where a label control is, and link to it from a website. Now, he never uses the term in the document, but that's a pretty good working definition of cross-site scripting, which is exactly what we'll be demonstrating later. Um, like I said, though, this was buried in Microsoft's website, and they really didn't do a good job of, of documenting it before. OK, so introduction to Java server faces. Those of you who are Java developers have, are probably familiar with Java server faces, have used it. It's a framework that's used in the development of web-based GUIs, and it, it's, it provides uh, tag libs and, and, and you know, uh, saving the state of, these, of the server, of the GUI controls. It's a Java Enterprise uh, Edition standard, and it's, and it's been around for a while. The f standards process started in 2001, with the first release being two th in 2004. In Sun Mohara is the official um, reference implementation with the Apache MyFace as being another popular implementation. And it's built on JSP Java server pages and typically runs on Tomcat. Okay, so let's go over the Java server faces request and response lifecycle. When, when the initial request is uh, uh, sent to the server, if it's an initial request, there is no view state. So, the control, so, it, so you send processing to the process response uh, step, and we'll go over that in a, a little bit. This is a little inv involved, so I kind of apologize in advance. Um, if, there is, if it is a postback, there should be a view state. So the, so the application restores a view state, a view from the state, and uh, restores the component tree, the component hierarchy. The next step is to apply the request values. So, or any other values, you know, cookies or so on that, that, that are applicable at this point. So you traverse the component tree and you invoke the decode method on each component. And uh, you get the component values of, you know, the corresponding values from the request and validations done at this point. So if, any, if there's any errors, those are queued up. Next step is you've got this model, you've got this uh, you know, component hierarchy on the server side, you update the values with the uh, validated values that were received in the previous step. Uh, then you invoke application event, any, anything that the application needs to do is, you know, process is, is handled off to the application. And now I'm, I've got an updated component tree uh, on the server, I'm ready to send the request, uh, the response back to the page. So again, if there was an initial request, there wasn't a view state. There, uh, so you go, to, you go to the JSP container, the, you, the JSP page, and you add the components from the page to the, com to the tree. So you kind of create like an initial tree from that. In the next step, you're ready to create the view states. You've got an updated component hierarchy with uh, updated values. You're ready to create this, you serialize this component tree, and you generate the web page. So uh, there's a couple of ways to, you know, the, so where is this uh, view state saved at? It's, uh, this, the specifications don't define that, you know, it should be, that it should either be saved on the client or the server. So it can be saved on either, either on the client or on the server. And uh, most popularly, though, it's saved on the client in a hidden field. So something underscore view state, you, you know, you're familiar with, or, um, and, and uh, there's issues with that. So, for example, if you have large view states, um, you know, you can run into performance type issues. That you, that's, you know, if you're a developer, you're kind of familiar with that. It can also be saved on the server, where the serialized views uh, stored in the session and a corresponding ID sent to the client. And this too runs into issues if you have clustered environments, because you've got session migration and so on. So that too can run into issues. But the view state can be saved in, in either location. It can be saved on the client or the server. So let's go over expression language. Anyone who's a you know, JSP developer is probably very familiar with this. Expression language is what allows a page author to access server comp and uh, components and their properties that are, uh, that are saved on the server. 
and it's and it's uh, it's pretty easy. So, for example, if I wanted to access uh, a customer's first name, I would do it very simply as you know customer dot first name, and you know so if you wanted to do like a hello, welcome back or something, it's it's very easy to do that. Expression language also pro provides access to several impl implicit objects such as uh, session scope. That's everything that's in, that you've put in your session, in application scope and request scope. So. Um, and we will be using this in our tag, which we'll be showing next. So what we did was, when we first ran into this, uh, you know, like David said, we ran into this issue, we started creating a tool, um, you know, to aid into sort of creating an attack against uh, a Java server faces application. Um, so it, we created a Java-based uh, application, and what it does is, um, let me pull it up for you right now, it's called, it's called a deface tool. And it can take an uh, unencrypted view state, a Java server faces view state, and it can decode it into a text object. And it can also generate a couple of attacks, which I'll be showing next. It can generate a cross-site scripting attack, basically an on mouse over event on, on the appropriate elements, and also generate a session data attack uh, using the expression language, the implicit objects we talked about earlier. And uh, we'd like to thank uh, John Rose. Uh, John Rose created a tool called dBlaze that basically brute forces flash remoting endpoints. And that was, uh, he inspired the name for our tool. Um, I'd like to mention that this tool is available on the Spider Labs uh, tools website. So if you wanted to play around with it, or you could download it from there. And it can be extended. We've left hooks in place. Uh, uh, you know, so if any, anyone wanted to extend it or do anything with it, it's available. So we'll, we'll be providing a demonstration of a Java server uh, Apache MyFaces application. It's a very simple two-page application. It's a credit card form that submits to a thank you page. Um, and what the application does on the back end is it puts the credit card number and the security code in session, which you know, is, a, is a common place to put data like that, because that should really not be persisted to any kind of uh, persistent storage. So it's common to put that kind of information uh, in the session. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so this, this is the first page. This is an order page, and uh, you know, so I'm just gonna submit this form. And uh, since Homer Simpson is now the has been voted the most popular character on TV and film, so seems like a good, good person, uh, somebody with money. You know, if you get hold of <laughs> their credit card, it would be a good idea. So I'm entering the credit card number. Um, just entering. Oh. So here's a form. It's a very common form. Secure, you know, credit card number, security code, expir expiration month and year, and I submit. Takes you to a thank you page, you know. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a, a post back against this thank you page. So this was an initial request. So, I'm, so what I'm going to take is I'm going to take that view state. I'm going to put it in dphase tool um, and, uh, and generate a session attack from it and then see if I can access all that data that was put in session. So the credit card number that was put in session, uh, you know, the security code, and, and, and anything else that's an application scope. So in this application, the database user and, and password is put in application scope, which is something not uncommon. Okay, so let's look, go find the view state for this, uh, for this page. And, and as you can, the view state, because this is a Java server faces, it's, it's in a field called javax.faces.viewState. So let's copy that. And let's put it into dphase tool. So just make sure that I only get the view state. So I can, de I can decode this view state just so that you get an idea of what it looks like. And it's basically a textual view of, of that component hierarchy on that page. And what it does is it also contains a number of expression language um, type. So for example, you can see right here, ccbacking.email. You know, so that's the email address that was submitted on that form. So it, it, so it, it contains a textual view of that of that component hierarchy and also a number of expression language um, 
elements. So I'm going to generate a session data attack from this. So what, what